Kia ora year 11, 12 and 13. This is another building blocks video where I look at what we can do if we can work out the sum and product of the roots of a quadratic. So we're going to go over something that you would have learnt in level 2 that probably felt quite hard back in level 2 and we're going to extend that idea a little bit further. So the sum and product of the roots of a quadratic um, can be summarised as follows. It comes down to two ideas. We've got our standard form of a quadratic equation, which is ax squared plus bx plus c is equal to zero. Right, so a, b, and c are the coefficients in my quadratic, and we're all go always going to make it that they're integers. Right, we can do that by multiplying through. And the roots of that quadratic um, are called alpha and beta. So don't confuse especially the alpha and the a. They're quite different things. So if we think about what it means to be a root of a quadratic, we can write our quadratic as follows. Right, because we know that we must have a matching up with an x and an x here. And from that we can match coefficients. So if we expand out the factorised version, here's what we get. And if you're watching this video and you're preparing for scholarship, this, this will be feeling hopefully pretty easy. Um, so once we clean this up, this is what we come up with. Now that leaves me with a here, so ax squared, a equals a, well obviously. Then matching the b, we get negative a times alpha plus beta x is equal to b. Okay, because when I do the expansion, the coefficient from the factorised version the coefficient on x is negative alpha plus beta in brackets times that a. And that gets me my first result that we know, whoops, I've got an x here, which is that the sum of the roots alpha plus beta is equal to negative b over a. And when we do a similar thing with the uh, coefficient constant, not the coefficient, we get a alpha beta is equal to c, giving me the other rule that you would have memorised as alpha beta is equal to c over a. So quite often we don't want to have to find the individual roots of an equation. So what these, how these problems typically work is that suppose that we know alpha plus beta and alpha beta, then what else can we figure out? And we get these two from looking at my um, coefficient version. So let's start with an example. So this is just one I've made up. The beauty of this is that you can make up pretty much any example yourself to practice on, and then you can check it using GeoGebra. So here we've got a quadratic, and I didn't find the roots of this first, but they happen to both be real, and they're not too hard to find at all. What can I say about the sum and product of those roots? Well, we know that alpha plus beta is equal to negative 9 over 4, and alpha times beta is equal to 5 over 4. So these are going to be the things that I use from here. Now, if we know those, let's see if we can write a new equation with the following roots. Alpha squared and beta squared. And we're going to do that without figuring out alpha equals or beta equals. Now, when you're doing this, I find it useful not to use a, b, and c in your second equation. So instead, we're going to say, let's make our new equation mx squared plus nx plus p equals zero. So what can I say about this? Well, the new roots are alpha squared and beta squared. And the sum of the roots of a quadratic equal negative this over this. So the same thing goes here. Alpha squared plus beta squared is equal to negative n over m. And the product of the roots, which is alpha squared times beta squared, equal c over a. So that's, in this case, going to be p over m. So what we have to do is to take what we've got, which is information on alpha plus beta and alpha beta, Right, we know those two numbers, and somehow manipulate this expression and this one to figure out p, m, and n. So let's think about what we might try. Well, we just have no clue what this expression is. 
But we do have alpha plus beta. So what happens if I square it? Well, if I square it, I get alpha squared plus beta squared plus 2 alpha beta. That means that I can now work out this because this is alpha plus beta squared, and I know this, minus 2 alpha beta, and I know this. How about the other one? Well, this one is always the easy one because alpha, be alpha squared beta squared is the same as alpha beta squared is equal to P over M. Typically, the sum of the roots one is the one that's going to give you some drama. But that wasn't too bad. So what can I say now? Well, rearranging this, switching the sides, I get alpha squared plus beta squared is equal to negative 9 over 4 squared minus 2 times alpha beta. Okay, so I'm just going to scroll back up and make sure you know where these numbers came from. They came from my first equation, and they were the sum of the roots and the product of the roots in that first one. So using those, let's see what we get. Well, we get 81 over 16. Often you'll get pretty messy fractions when you're doing questions like this. Minus 10 over 4, which works out to be... 81 minus 40 over 16, which is 41 over 16. And we know that that's equal to negative n over m. And remember, my new quadratic has got this form, mx squared plus nx plus, I think I said p, is equal to 0. Now we're going to do the product of the roots. And we have alpha squared beta squared is equal to alpha beta squared so this is the easy one. So that's 5 over 4 squared, which is 25 over 16. And that's going to be P over M. So by making a sensible choice on M, this works out really nicely. M is 16, N is 41, and P is 25. Which means that this equation, 16X squared minus... 41, hang on, where's n? No, n, sorry, n is negative 1, negative 41. Just be careful with that, because you'll see I, stuck, I mucked that up really easily. And so you might too. Um, here's 40, 41 here is negative n. So n is negative 41. So going back to my quadratic, here's what we've got. So let's go over again what's so special about this quadratic. Well, it's got roots we claim, of alpha squared and beta squared. But I thought some of you might not believe me. So what I've done is I've gone over to GeoGebra and I've graphed the following two equations. So I've graphed our first equation, which is 4x squared plus 9x plus 5 equals 0. And you can see that the roots end up being, um, what did we get? So alpha works out to be negative 1 and beta works out to be negative 1.25. So what we want to see on our second one, on this one here, is that the roots happen at 1, and this one I think is 1 point, I think it's 1.56. Yeah, it is, because it's um, 25 over 16. So let's look at the graph. Where is it? Here it is. So this is the first graph, right? This is the first polynomial. 4x squared plus 9x plus 5 equals 0. And this is the second graph. So this has got both of them on. So there they are. And this is the one with roots alpha squared and beta squared. So if that's alpha and that's beta, here's alpha squared sitting at positive 1. And here's beta squared at um, 25 over 16. Now I think that's enough for one video. I'm going to do probably several more of these during the year because I think they are the kind of question that you could expect to see coming up in scholarship. Um, because you have to be a little bit creative with what we do um, to figure out the alpha squared plus the beta squared. So this is probably the most straightforward type. In the next video, I'm going to look at how we can have um, the sum of the cubes and the product of the cubes. 
but that's enough for now. Thanks for watching.